Hey everybody! In today's video, I'm going to do a quick run through of the Fuse tool from We Are Memory Keepers and just show you some things if you haven't seen this tool before that you might like. I'm going to be creating a custom pocket page for a pocket page swap I'm in on Split Coast. And I needed something with nine ATC sized pockets for the swap, so that's what I'm going to start with. Now I've taped down just a regular sheet protector onto my work surface and I have the fuse tool ruler here. And I've just lined up the sheet protector with the grid paper, my Stampin' Up! grid paper. And this is going to help me figure out where the pockets need to be and how big each of them needs to be. Now the fuse tool has a little channel in it, in the ruler, I'm sorry then that's where the little perforating wheel that seals your pockets closed will run. And it makes a really easy way to make a nice straight line. Now the cord on the fuse tool and the stand, they don't make really a happy mix. The cord is only about four feet long and the stand is just kind of a flimsy piece of plastic and it will just slide right off your desk which you do not want with a super hot tool. So I would recommend getting a soldering iron stand or something that's more substantial because with the length of this cord I think you'll be in for trouble. Now I'm just lining up the ruler to run the little tool down. It has just like a little wheel that's very hot and it's just fusing along that line so I have just a pocket at the top and you can see how quick and easy this is. Now to make the nine I'm going to show you a little trick for the math impaired. This is an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. But if you take your ruler and you start with the zero in the upper left hand corner and you take something that's divisible by three because I want three I want my paper to be evenly divided into three and I don't feel like doing the math. You just angle it down so that 9, for example, which is divisible by 3, touches the right edge of the cardstock, and then you make marks at 3 and 6, and then your paper is perfectly divided into 3. The little hash marks that you made, I just did 3 sets of them, will all be in a straight line that divides your piece of paper into thirds. My math professor father is probably having a heart attack right now, but I don't care. This is why I'm making an art video. I don't feel like figuring out 3.66666, so booyah. Do the same thing in the other orientation to get your other three, and this is now going to be my guide to seal up my pockets. I just measured them just to make sure they're big enough for an ATC, and they are. An ATC is an artist trading card, in case you've never heard that term before. Now what I want to do is take the cardstock, I'm just using it as a guide for this first step, and I want to actually put it inside the sheet protector because I'm going to be doing a little bit of cutting for the openings of each of the pockets. Because if I just fuse these along all these lines, then I wouldn't have any pockets. And I need to cut little openings before I fuse. So I'll use the fuse ruler again. I like it because it has these little non-slip feet on it that really make it great for a lot of things. But especially when you're running the sealing tool along it, you don't want it moving anywhere and these little feet really do the job. So I'm taping this down and I'm just aligning the template with some of the vertical lines on my grid paper. That makes it easy to make sure it's straight and taping it down with a little bit of washi tape. Now I just have a little Fiskars craft knife here and I'm going to line up the fuse ruler along the lines that indicate where each pocket is going to be and I'm just going to make a cut obviously not to both edges of that line because I need to seal the pocket but these will just be the opening top pockets of my page. Now I will say one thing I think they could have done better here is it would have been nice to have a full length ruler for people who are working with eight and a half by eleven cardstock or even twelve by twelve pages that they want to create custom pockets for. I think a longer ruler would have made more sense. So 
So now I'm taking the cardstock out and putting it behind the sheet protector and taping it down. And again, it's going to serve as my guide for fusing the pockets closed. This is one of the great things about working with clear poly is I can see through it and use my little template. Just make sure that it's taped securely down. You definitely don't want it moving around while you're fusing. Now the channel is big enough that I can actually see the pencil line through the channel, which makes it very easy to get this straight. And so I'm just lining it up on that line. And fusing, which is just magical. I mean, it's sort of like heat embossing. So now I have a great little pocket on top. I've done two at a time. It'll stick to your paper a little bit, but you just pull it right up. It doesn't undo the seal. And then you can see what I mean about the ruler here. So instead of making one long fuse that was 11 inches long, I have to line it up exactly and then continue that line. So I think that maybe they'll come out with a longer ruler, or maybe they already have. And I'm using the edge as well as the channel. Sometimes it's quicker just to run along the edge than to find the inside of that channel. And then I'm going to go across the bottom of each pocket, just making sure that I stay above that line that I cut so that the pockets will open, just like a normal baseball card sleeve, except out of a very inexpensive sheet protector that you can just get at an office supply store. And this means that those Project Life pages in the Stampin' Up! catalog can now be completely customized to any size you want, even though they come in a variety pack. So I encourage you to look at doing that. You can find those on my website, and I'll have a supply list on my blog as well. Now, I thought it would be fun now that I made the page just to go ahead and do my artist trading card that I'm going to put in the swap. I'm going to do more no-line watercolor since you asked for it. And I'm using the For All Things stamp set. It has just a beautiful little image that could really be wheat or just little leaves. And I'm going to stamp that in Daffodil Delight. And I'm using my Fine Tech watercolor to just use the Daffodil Delight as a guide and fill in just a little bit of color. I'm going to do a green and not make it wheat. So I'm going to use several of the greens. I will go ahead and speed this up and you'll see that I start with the lightest colors first and then add shading with both darker greens, some custom mixed greens, and a few browns. I'm using a very fine tip paintbrush here. This is a very delicate image. You'll see as the detail develops how thin the stems are and the little bow that ties them together. And so I really needed a good quality fine paintbrush and I'll link you to the one I use. I'm not loyal to one particular brand of paintbrush or another. I tend to experiment until I find paintbrushes that the hairs don't fall out of, which that is really the worst thing that can happen to you when you're painting. So. I do try to spend a little extra money on my paintbrushes when I can, but I move from brand to brand and shape to shape, so I have just a huge kind of hodgepodge collection of paintbrushes. What's really nice is if you have like a Jerry's Artorama or a Dick Blick or some store near you that teaches painting classes, just take one of their classes that has supplies included and that is a great way to find out what you do like and don't like in a paintbrush without investing a bunch of money because unlike some pens and markers they don't let you sit around in the aisles of the art supply store and paint paintings with their paintbrushes so that you can figure out if the hairs fall out. The ones from China are notorious for that and I'm it's hard to avoid those, but I try to. I try to get some higher quality ones that are made in other countries. I'm going to add a little bit of sky behind this flower. 
And you'll see at some points when I put down the blue, it's really dark. But these watercolors blend really nicely, and I don't have any hesitation about putting down a darker color in the beginning. I can definitely get it all sort of an even shade by the time I'm done without any harsh lines in the background. Now I do like to dab. You'll see me dabbing it off just a little bit. Whenever I do a sky, I find that if I put wet watercolor down and then I dab it off just a little bit, it gives a mottled appearance that looks to me a lot like clouds would look. You want just an uneven look in the background and not a smooth blue. Because outside of New Mexico, the sky isn't usually just a smooth blue. You lucky New Mexico people, I'm jealous. Anybody who has a house they want to give away in Santa Fe, please let me know. I will be there in a heartbeat. Now painting around the little stems and the bow can be a little bit challenging. So just make sure you don't get in a hurry and you use that fine, fine point of the paintbrush to get inside the elements. And you can see sometimes I go in pretty dark so I can see where it is and then I just dab it off and then it ends up being the same color as the rest of the background. And don't worry if it overlaps a little bit, it's really not the end of the world. I tend to put a little more focus on getting the sky around that bottom part just because it's lighter than I do around the top. So I'll finish that up. It's always a good idea when you've worked on watercolor paper just to dry it a little bit before you move on to the next stage of your project. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put some Wink of Stella on here. I'm opening up my green and if you've never had a Wink of Stella brush before, you can see me take off that little black collar. That They come brand new with that little black collar. And until you take that off, no ink will go down into the brush. So that's great. So these two were new. I tried the green. I thought it was a little bit too bright. So I added some gold. And then I'm coming back with clear, which just adds shimmer all over the little leaves. It's very pretty. I know it's a little bit hard to see. Now I'm adding the sentiment from the same set. It's grateful for you. And I know I'm not using the misty. Y'all are probably all fainting right now. But I'm actually going to tape this down a little bit because it's still a little bit warped. Just so that I can get this perfectly straight. And you can see I tried it out on my mat a couple times to just get used to where the stamp was stamping and make sure that I knew how to stamp it so that it was straight. Now as I was putting the washi tape down I noticed that I actually really liked the pattern of the washi tape with the design. I thought that that crisp black kind of tied in the greeting and made it look really nice. So I'm just going to dry this quickly with my heat gun. VersaFine, I like to heat set. And I also like to get a little bit of the warp out of my watercolor paper with the heat gun. But here's what I thought I would do with the washi tape. I can't remember where I learned this trick, but I love it. What you do is you tear off a piece of washi tape if you really want it to be straight. And you put it sticky side up on your mat and just tack it down with something. In this case, I'm just using a little bit more tape. I'm going to put that on both ends. And then I can take my little card and exactly line it up on one of the grid lines on my grid paper. And I know that the tape will be adhered straight, which is that's one of my more difficult challenges is getting washi tape straight on the edge of something. But this is a way to really make it work. So now I can just fold it over and it's a perfect little accent on the edge of this somewhat softer composition. And then I can just trim off the ends flush with the top of the card and the bottom of the card. 
And that is my little Pocket Pals swap. And my theme is gratitude. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching.